Hey guys, Pogo here with a video regarding the public service announcement on the switch to UUIDs. Um, at the time, right now, this uh, announcement was posted yesterday, last night, and it is very important to pretty much any plugin that has ever existed. Um, basically, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and summarize and explain um, what this article says, and then I'm going to show you how to apply it to your plugin. So, uh, basically, um, what is happening is Mojang is switching um, Minecraft so that you can uh, rename your player. Let's say that when you, uh, a few years ago, you created a name and you don't really like it that much anymore, and you want to change it. Uh, with this new system, instead of having to buy another account, you could actually just change your name. Now, of course, the problem with this is that uh, let's say I have a ban plugin, and I want to store the list the name of all the players that have been banned. Well, uh, if I was banned, I could just change my name, and then I would be unbanned since that name wouldn't be registered, and I could continue to wreak havoc on the server. Or let's say that an administrator changed their name, and then I snatched up their old name, and maybe in at least one plugin they still had the old name registered. I would now be under their name, and I would inherit... Um, you know, any permissions that they had, I, if they were still op, then I would be op, and I could do whatever I wanted on this server. So as you can see, it's clearly a big issue. So a UUID is a universally unique identifier, and this is what Mojang is going to be using to keep track of players. So I could change my name as much as I want, but I'm still going to have a UUID associated with my account that will never change. The example given here is Notch's UUID, which is this long number. Basically what that means is, no matter, even if Notch changed his name, it wouldn't matter as far as the UUID, because that wouldn't change. And that is how you can, you know, keep a player banned, even if they change their name, by using their UUID instead. Now, um, of course, this will break pretty much any plugin that exists, basically, you know, permissions, region protection, world protection, chess protection, ownership, teleportation, economy, chat, and ban management. A lot of these plugins will be broken because they rely on having the player's name where the name could now change, and we need to use the UUIDs. Basically, this is the equivalent of running the server in offline mode. Um, someone could pick up, as it says here, pick up an admin's username and take over the server, or bypass the protections. Um, so what Bucket has done is, um, they've already gotten started, and here's their plan. Starting already with Minecraft 1.7.5, they are deprecating string-based player lookups to raise developer awareness about the switch to UIDs and the impact it would have. Basically, they're deprecating methods like get player given a string, uh, like that, just to raise awareness. This is not permanent. This is temporary. And they just added a quick um, like hack to allow for getting a name by UUID and stuff like that. Um, after this, starting with 1.7.6 and on, they are going to improve the UUID lookup, and then um, name lookup will become less efficient uh, in favor of UUID. Then in 1.8, all of the deprecations will be removed um, as the time for preparation has passed if they haven't been removed already. So basically the methods that are currently deprecated, the deprecations will be removed because at that point, anyone, any plugin that's going to be updated will have been updated and everyone should, at that point, know about uh, this UUID switch. So I'm going to show you how to apply this to a banning plugin, but first we need to head over to dl.craftbucket.org, uh, and make sure that we grab the latest version of either Craft Bucket or Bucket. Um, this version, you need to get the latest development build, because that's where they've been making all of the commits about deprecating the methods and adding the... Um, temporary hacks and whatever, so you want to make sure that you get the latest version so that these deprecations and new methods will show up. And once you have that, you're going to want to drop it into uh, your server folder and replace your old craft bucket. That way, in uh, your IDE, Eclipse, or IntelliJ, or whatever you use, it will automatically use the newer version of the library once you restart it, and then when you run the server, it will also have the newer version. 
So we're going to head over to Eclipse, and I have right here a newer version of a Warn plugin that we made a while ago. Basically what it does is um, you can warn a player, so if they're spamming, you could tell them to stop spamming. And the first time you do that, it will send them a message. Second time you do that, it'll kick them, and the third time you do it, um, excuse me, it'll ban them. Now, as you can see, this plugin will clearly not work once the name switches, because let's say I get banned for hacking, and then I switch my name from Pogosic29 to Pogosic29Dev. I would obviously be allowed to join since my name isn't logged. So we need to switch over this plugin so that it will log the UUIDs instead, so that even if I change my name, I will still remain banned. So as you can see with the newer version, I'm getting um, deprecated uh, errors or, you know, fixes, whatever, because uh, on, sorry, getting deprecation on get player with a string and set band for player. And the reason why, of course, this is happening is because this one is temporary because uh, you might not want to get the player from the string, from like a string. In some cases you would. Like, uh, chat, if you were, like, sending a private message to someone, that would be fine. But if you were logging their name, you wouldn't want to log their name, you would want to log their UUID. And, of course, with set banned, if you change your name, then, uh, you will no longer be banned. So we're gonna go through this plugin and fix any places where it needs to be fixed in order to comply with the new UUID switch. So, as you can see, this is a pretty simple plugin. First part checks if there are enough arguments. Then here we get the target that that they're asking for. And in this case, we want to leave it with a string. And the reason why we want to do this is because we're this is getting the um, player that they're talking about. So they're going to give the name of the player, and we still want to look them up by the name that's given. Now, once 1.8 comes out and Bucket is updated, this get player method will no longer be deprecated. Right now, it's just a warning. But in this case, we're going to want to leave it taking a string. Of course, if the target is null, we want to let them know. Then right here, we just um, create a string called message, and we append all the arguments to it. So if I say, you know, stop hacking, then the string will be stop hacking with, you know, red. Now, here is where the problem starts to occur. This if statement says if the um, player, and actually, we don't actually need this second part. But basically, what this is saying is if... Um, if the player is not already logged, then we want to go ahead and send them a message and then log them. But we can't store by name anymore, because if I change my name, it will no longer apply. So we're going to want to use target.getUniqueID.toString. And what this is going to do, we can actually just make this easier and say string UUID is equal to target.getUniqueID.toString. And what this is going to do is it's going to return, it's going to get their unique identifier, uh, and then it's going to get a string representation of it, which we can actually use. So if they're not already in there, but we want to give them first the message, then we want to send them a message normally. Then when we go to set it, we want to save it as their UUID instead of their username, and then of course save the configuration. Here again, when we retrieve from the configuration file, we are getting it by the UUID. Then if we want to um, kick them, then we would kick them with the message, and we would use set with UUID again. Now, um, in if L is equal to 2, we want to kick the player with the message, but we don't want to actually set them to be banned. We want to take this code right here, and we want to do set the UUID this time to 3. And now we're going to actually go ahead and write a player login event. Public um, void on enable. We need to, of course, register the events. And then we're going to say... And now, um, this might be temporary. I don't know how they're going to handle banning. They might put in, like, an API for um, banning by UUID, or maybe the ban method actually does use it. But for now, we're just going to do this. And, of course, if anything changes, um, then I'm going to, of course, make an update video. Dot get, um, or sorry, dot register events, this and this. Now, right down here, we're just going to quickly write a player login 
or not at event handler public void on player login player login event e import then we are going to say we want to copy this if statement start so we want to say rather if it does contain e dot get player dot and we can actually just copy this UUID again since we'll use it a couple of times and of course target is going to be e dot get player dot get unique ID so um, string UUID is equal to whatever get unique identifier dot to string so if the if it is contained and get config dot get int UUID is equal to three then e dot um, disallow result dot kick band and then the message now you could of course save the um, message um, I'm not going to do that but basically what you could do is you could store um, under their UUID instead of making UUID a configure like an integer you can make it a configuration section and that would contain the level which would be the integer and then the met the ban message once they get banned so for now it's just going to be this and so what this is going to do is if the player um, is in the configuration and their um, level is three so if they should be banned we're going to disallow entry the reason is going to be kick for banned and then the message is going to be banned with a warn prefix and of course you could log the message so let's go ahead and test this but the first thing that I want to show you is quickly how to get a player from the UUID because I know that this will probably come up and it's a good thing to know how to do like let's say that you want to um, you know load up players from like if you want to get given a UUID get a player I'm going to show you how to do that so we're going to take this um, UUID string and we're going to say um, player from UUID is equal to bucket dot get server dot get player. You'll notice get player takes either a string or a UUID and we want to use a UUID. And then we're going to say UUID dot from string UUID or, in, or it could just be, um, you know, uh, from string and then like get config dot get string for whatever and then we can actually say let's just say um, just to show as an example from UUID dot get name just to show that it does in fact work so let's go ahead and export the warn plugin and then start up the server one thing I'll show you while it's starting up is that in this case we want this to stay deprecated you could actually um, add a suppress warnings deprecation um, uh, annotation and then what that would do is it would just you know it would ignore it and you wouldn't keep getting annoyed by that you don't need to do it since of course it will be uh, undeprecated uh, once 1.8 comes out but if you just wanted to do it for now you can so now I'm going to go ahead and join in and as you can see when I log in, it's, it already does this. It will actually tell me what my UUID is. That's just a part of Bucket, but that's what one looks like, and there is my UUID. So now let's actually go ahead and try out Warn. I'm going to be doing it from the console since, um, uh, since I'm going to be you know, kicked and banned. So the first time I do this, it will say, you are too cool in a message. And you'll notice that it prints out Pogo Stick 29 because right here it prints out from UUID dot get name, which is Pogo Stick 29, which demonstrates that given this UUID, it was able to retrieve a player and then print out the name. So I'm going to remove that and then I'm going to comment out this line, but uh, I'm going to leave it there so that you can, of course, access it. And that's just a helpful way if you want to get. Um, a player from a UUID that is how you would go about doing it and then also I'll show you in the warn configuration file this is from before we made the switch but as you can see it now saves my UUID which is the same as that of course this one doesn't have the slash the dashes but that doesn't matter 
and it will store my um, UUID instead of my name so that if I change my name it will still work. Just to show you if I um, do it again, you'll see that I'm kicked for being uh, too cool. And if I go here, it's now been updated to 2. Now finally, uh, let's join one more time and do it. It says you are too cool. Uh, level was now brought up to 3 for my UUID. And let's just try to join again. As you can see, um, it did not connect because of band, which means that it was able, it checked for um, the UUID of the connecting player, and it found that it existed and that uh, the level was equal to 3, so then it kicked me uh, because I was banned given that message. So now I can go ahead and, of course, I don't have an unban command, but if I want to let myself back in, I'll just delete that file, and then I should be good to go. All right, so that is all for this video. Uh, this was just about the public service announcement regarding uh, the switch to UUIDs, and I showed you how to do it using a warn plugin that will, you know, first send the player a message, then kick them, then ultimately ban them. Uh, it's very important that you take the time to switch over all of your active plugins and even your inactive plugins to use this. If your plugin is used by anyone, then the 1.8 update and the you know name changing av ability has a good chance of breaking your plugin. Don't forget that you um, don't always want to make the switch. If you're if you have a plugin that sends the player um, you know it gets the player by the name and then sends them a message, that's fine. But if you are you know, saving a player, like if I go to, you know, claim a plot of land and it needs to save that that's my plot of land, it should save using my UUID so that if I switch accounts, then I will still have it on my new name. Or rather, if I switch names, I'll still have it on my new name. And if someone takes my old name, they won't gain access to it. And of course, for anything like administration, uh, permissions, and whatever, that is uh, extremely important. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and also comment if you have any uh, questions or concerns, especially regarding the switch to UUID. I am always available to answer any questions about that, and you can also check out the PSA in the description below if you want to see what um, Bucket officially said about it and then what some people have been commenting about. And I will see you guys soon with the next video. Bye, guys.